Hi, and welcome back to Beginning Ionic Hybrid Application Development. In our last section, we got into the basics of Angular services, making AJAX calls, and adding infinite scroll and refresh elements. In this section, we'll take a look at the CSS and JavaScript components, adding components to a view, creating and updating an Angular value object, and saving and restoring the value object to local storage. This is video 4.1, CSS and JavaScript components. In this video, we'll look at CSS and JavaScript components. Ionic has two basic types of components, CSS and JavaScript. CSS components don't need any user code in order to function. In most cases, you simply add the HTML tag to your page, set its attributes, and let the magic happen. JavaScript components require you to write some code, usually in the controller, for the magic to happen. The best place to learn about both types of components is theionicframework.com. Let's go there and see some components firsthand. From the site's homepage, click Docs in the upper right hand corner, then click CSS components near the middle of the page. Before we begin our tour, you should know that most CSS components have two styles. The first is as a class added to an HTML element, usually a div tag. The second is as an AngularJS directive, usually an element position. The documentation shows both styles of components. Let's begin by taking a quick look at the header component. A header is one of three major sections of a page. It sits at the top of the page above the other components, the content and the footer. Like most CSS components, the header can be given one of Ionic's nine theme options. It can also have a subheader added to it. While header and footers are fixed to the top and bottom of the page, respectively, the content is in the middle and scrolls vertically to accommodate all of the markup. Ionic supplies a wide variety of buttons. The basic button is just wide enough to wrap its enclosed text. The block button will stretch to fill all of its parent containers width. The full width block button is very similar to the block button except its width stretched all the way to the edge with no horizontal padding spacing it out. We have already seen in Ionic list and list items, but we haven't seen the list divider yet. List dividers give a bit of separation between the items in the list. List buttons allow you to place a clickable icon on either the left or right side of a list item. Cards allow you to create a UI similar to that of Google Now. The individual cards can have headers, footers, thumbnails, and lists. Ionic has several different styles of text input, all of which support some kind of placeholder text. The placeholder text can be inline, to the left or right of, or even on top of the text input. The Ionic toggle is one of a few different ways to wire up a Boolean value. There are also check boxes and radio buttons. The range allows the user to slide their finger between two different values. JavaScript components usually require some code to be added to the controller in order to function. Let's see how we would add an action seat component. Let's see how we would add the action sheet component to our playlist page. First we go to the action sheet documentation page. Under the usage section it shows some sample code. Copy this code and paste it into our playlist control. Then we add the two specified resources Ionic Action Sheet and Timeout. In the playlist view we add code to trigger the action sheet. Then we go to the browser, navigate to the playlist page, and click on any of the list items and up pops our action sheet. It will look slightly different depending on which device type it is running, Android or iOS. Most of the other JavaScript components are used similarly. Most will have some sample code 
which we can use to get our code up and running. In the next video, we will talk about adding components to a view.